and you guys got divorced in, I don't know, nine years ago? So around 2010, 2011? Yeah. Something like that? Yeah, it's been eight, yeah. Okay. And you're married now? Yeah. You've remarried. How long have you been married now? Five, five years, I think. Five, six five years. years, yeah. That's cool. So, I, you got any kids? I got two kids. I got in little, the Philippines? Yeah, in the Philippines and stuff. So, I'd always joke that I'm going to marry, you know, somebody from a third world country, give them a bicycle and flip flops and they appreciate me and all that stuff. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> you guys have plans on coming back or are you going to set up shop? Uh, we have uh, about 30 acre farm. Yeah, that we have in the Philippines that the family kind of runs and all that stuff, yeah. um, and mostly all the family. You know, we got pigs, goats, you know, banana plantation, coconut, yeah, cacao and stuff. So you think you're there for the for mm -hmm. the long haul, or are you ever going to come back? I want to bring them back over here, yeah, and stuff. Uh, the school education over there is crappy. Right. I got to go into a private school and stuff. Right. My son speaks uh, English. My daughter speaks uh, Visaya and a little bit of English and stuff. Yeah. And so That's cool. Yeah. But yeah, the plan is, is for, um, I was traveling to um, I think it was in April, before the pandemic stuff happened. Uh -huh. To get them uh, to do all the paperwork and all that stuff and bring them, you know, to the U.S. Have they ever been to the U.S.? No, never. Have. Well, uh, we were having issues because my wife in the Philippines was never. Uh, she was a late register, meaning that uh, that the ancestry we call it ancestry land, where you're up in the mountains and all that stuff, and you're born and you're not in the system. Right. So you know, we had to go. It took almost a year to find out her correct information so we could get her the correct documents right. and all that stuff. Yeah. And Absolutely. and then over there it's like you don't give them on the computer and stuff. Uh you go into a room and you give them a name and a date and all that stuff and they bring out books and books and start looking through and stuff. So yeah. Uh, yeah. So you don't have any recollection of visiting the grandparents when you arrived Sunday evening, you, you know, because again, that's that's the information you provided to Texas investigators. And it's been so long. I don't know if we sat there and and then mom came and then we might have went over there. Okay. You know, I, I'm you know to go visit with grandpa and all that stuff. Right. So, you know, I'm not 100% sure. Right. Probably just, it would be a good idea just to stay with what was provided in 04. That's probably more accurate than, than what you're able to remember yeah. now. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. Because, you know, Claude had to borrow Casey's truck on Sunday, and Claude was at the grandparents' house whenever Casey took him his truck. So I didn't know if you remember being there. And again, if I say something, it may trigger a memory where, oh, that's right. And and if it does, Or you might understand that, you know, that if the detectives is getting mom and mine a uh, thing, because I know that mom went to grandpa's and all that stuff and was visiting, I think, Uncle Bobby and all that stuff. Yeah. When I came in. You know, I, I, I'm not... That's what you remember? I remember that mom was in, in town at Grandpa and, and uh, well, I think Uncle Bobby was over there. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not... Yeah, he was. He was I'm not there. totally for sure. Once okay. I talk to mom and all that stuff, yeah. you know, this might... Right. You know... Yeah, that makes sense. You know. Yeah. So, what... Do you remember about going over to Casey's Sunday night? And I'll, I'll refresh your memory just a little bit. You told Texas investigators that that you saw him in town and you 
turned around and you followed him to the trailer and you guys spoke in the driveway for approximately 15 minutes and you kind of got the idea that he wanted you to leave because him and Rebecca were, were there. Do you oh, remember yeah. any of that? I was thinking that was when I first came up there to move mom and all that stuff. Because when I went and moved mom up there, I remember going to Casey's house and stuff, and then me and him talking in the driveway, and the neighbors were sitting there watching us. Yeah. And he was sitting on a car. So I don't know. Well, it was a black, uh, not a black, I think it was a green car that he was sitting on and all that stuff, and I think that yeah. was Uncle Well, let, let, let me see if this don't jar your memory. Uh, it may not, but so in Casey's interview, he said that Rebecca looked out the window and saw a car in the driveway on the road, and then Casey looked out and saw that it was you, and then he went out there, and you guys talked for about 15 minutes. And it was mom was with us and all that stuff. No, not not you know, not at this time. This was. He said that. Uh, Whenever you got out, you said that you weren't going to stop because you didn't see Casey's truck, uh, but you saw Rebecca there. So, you know, that's Casey had already given his truck to Claude in town, and you were just, you know, it was it was dark whenever this happened. Whenever you stopped by, and you and Casey were talking in the driveway, yeah. but you don't you don't have any recollection of that on Sunday evening. I remember, you know, in the beginning when Mom moved up there and all that stuff, but um, I might have went and talked to him and then and stuff maybe Sunday. I'm not totally for sure. Well, yeah. you were consistent in 04 about talking to Casey Sunday evening, and Casey was very consistent about the information that he provided, that, that Sunday evening that you stopped by briefly and, and, and you, you and Casey spoke out in the driveway. Is that okay, you know, but I'm thinking Mom was with me because she went, she was going everywhere with me when, and yeah, when I was up there, right? And so, um, yeah, I might have talked to him and all that stuff. Well, I think, and and obviously, I'm not, I don't care in the slightest about you know smoking marijuana, but it, it, it's it's very clear through interviews uh, and the information that was provided by Casey that, that obviously Casey and Rebecca was in the smoking marijuana and you and uh, even Jeremy were smoking marijuana during this period of time. So it, it kind of figured, I figured that maybe you were kind of swinging by to see maybe, you know, you no. had just showed up from Texas. thing is, I work 7 to 7 and work for a company that they take random piss tests. Right. I make really good money. I don't want to even jeopardize. In, in 04? Even in 04. I'm talking 23 years that I haven't even touched marijuana. Okay. Okay. And if you call I know operator or whatever, they'll sit there and say every piss test that they ever took me, I was clean. Yeah. I don't do drugs. Right. Okay. All that stuff. All right. I even live up here in a local state. And it's just, I just shake my head and all that stuff. Right. Uh, it's, yeah, it's not worth your paycheck for sure. No. And what I make now, it's like, no, I don't even want to jeopardize that. Right. That makes sense. So, you know, I do kind of remember that, you know, Casey had a guess. And I was thinking it was when I first moved, you know, mom up there and all that stuff. You know, it's been a long time, you know, I'm trying to remember. Right, right. And that he was kind of telling me, you know, hey, you know, get out of here and all that stuff. And then I remember Casey sitting on the vehicle, me standing up against my truck, and the watching the neighbors, like, stare us down. I'm like, you know, well, what's up with this and all that stuff. Yeah. And he's like, you know, hey, can you get lost because, you know, I'm going to get lucky and all that stuff. Right. And I, you know... Where we were at, to there, I just saw, you know, it looked like a, you know, a, a girl up by the trailer and all that stuff. And I'm like, you know, okay, hey, I, I'm out of here. Yeah. And all that stuff. And then that was it. Right.
So, if I'm not mistaken, you went to school for a period of time in Melbourne. Or yes, sir. Mountain, Mountain no, Pleasant? I went to uh, Melbourne School. Okay. Went to Melbourne School. From what, what grades? It was just for probably six months. That was in high school? It was in high school. It was, uh, there was an incident that happened down in South Texas, I think my sophomore year, and, uh, an incident. What do you mean? Uh, I had coaches sit there because I got hurt my freshman year in football and stuff, and then they were getting in my case saying that I was a pussy, and, right. you know, um, just ragging me really hard, but I got hit so hard that, you know, the doctor was like, you take a hit like that, you might be in a wheelchair. Right. So, dad was like, you know, suck it up. Mom's like, uh-uh, and his football career is over. Right. So, I had these coaches that talked a whole bunch of crap to me and, you know, uh, beat little me and talked down to me and stuff, and so I finally got upset, and I was failing the class. Right. But when things, uh, got opened up, uh, they sat there and saw that I was passing them in the class with A's. And I had paperwork showing D's, mm. failing grades. Yeah. And so when they showed failing grades and he showed me passing with A's, you know, yeah. he decided to uh, quit. Okay. So it was probably a pretty uncomfortable yeah. place to be. So when that happened, that's one of the reasons why you came to Arkansas? Uh, uh, I just sat there and uh, told mom and them, you know, I just I want to quit school and get my GED and all that stuff. Right. So um, mom uh, talked to grandpa. Right. Grandpa says, hey, come up here and go to school here. And so I did go to school there, but I didn't like it. And, and that was your, your junior year? Or no, I think my sophomore year. Sophomore? Sophomore, I think, yeah, my sophomore, maybe sophomore, junior year. I'm not, I, I, no. Where did you, did you end up graduating high school? Yeah, I graduated high school and went on to college. From what, what school? Rockport. You graduated? I went back to that school and I made them uncomfortable. Okay, gotcha. And you, what, graduated in 96, 97? I think it was 96. Um, it was my freshman year, I think. My sophomore year, I had the issue. My junior year, I went to Portland High School. Uh, I went up to, I think, the ending of my probably sophomore year. And then my junior year, I went to Portland the town that was a little bit over and all that stuff. Right. And my senior year, I went back to Rockport. Okay. So, you're in Melbourne, Arkansas, as a sophomore going into your junior year. Yeah, I think sophomore. So, sophomore, junior, I'm not okay. totally for sure. And you're living with grandparents. Grandpa and grandma, all okay. that stuff. All right. Uh, how are you getting to and from? A bicycle? A bicycle. You're on a bicycle. That's my transportation. How far was the school from grandparents' house? Or were you riding your bike to school? Yeah, riding my bike to school. Yeah. And stuff. And then, um, so I'd ride my bike and all that stuff and, and, uh, go, and they lived in Melbourne and stuff. Right. right. So I'd go back and forth on a bicycle and all that stuff and then, that was my transportation. Man, that's how I went to school, rode a bike to school, about four miles, yeah. That's, I don't know. think it's four miles, but, you know, it was, you know, I think it was more fun going back because it was all healy. Yeah. Instead of going up right. and all that stuff, so. Right. Did you uh, have any any problems at the school while you were there that you remember? In Melbourne? Yeah. No, I was an outsider. And, you know, there was a class of like 12, Ten people, right? And I'm like, you know, uh, uh, too small and all that stuff. And plus, uh, I have a learning disability, and so. Um, well, 
get like dyslexic or dyslexic and stuff, and yeah. when I'm reading stuff, and just you know, I might not understand it. I might read it 50 times, and then and finally it clicks. Man, and I'm the same way. I'm the same way. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I went up there, and then it was just like you know, I'm. This ain't my cup of tea. You know, I love you, right. Grandma, Grandpa. You know, thank you for the opportunity. You know, and right. and, and and stuff. And that. So. Did you have much interaction with with the McCulloughs during that period of time? Do you remember spending time with with uh, uh, when I was Chris real, and Corey and no Casey? No. Mostly the one I would talk to would be Randy. Randy, the older brother. He's oh, the right. half brother. He's the half brother. Me and him are a lot closer, you could say, than the other ones and stuff. Yeah. But if I saw him, I'd, you know, hey, how's it going and all that stuff, but. Right. Um, so I remember one time that I rode my bike all the way out to the farm, Grandpa's farm. Where um, the trailer is. Is that where you're talking? Yeah. Yeah. And I took the long route, you know, the highway and all that stuff, and then went and they were like, oh my God, you know, and I was like, I'm dead, you know. Yeah. You know, this is, uh, my legs are hurting me, and I'm like, Grandpa got to come get me and all that stuff. And, and right. so, um, but I kind of remember that action where I think the, all the boys were there and all that stuff, but that was you know, a long time ago. So you don't remember any disciplinary action at school whenever you were going to Melbourne school? Never were never, never. suspended? Nope. Or nope. Nobody, you never had to stay after school for anything nope. or none of that kind of stuff? Never in trouble and all that stuff. Just had the incidents with those coaches down in South Texas. It opened up later down the road that one of the coaches messed with about six girls. Yeah. And literally a lot of other stuff got opened up. Yeah. To where there was a lot of mass, massive investigations. Right. And so. Right. So you graduated from Rockport in '96, and. You said you had some college. You yeah. went immediately into university? I went to Del Mar College. And then... Um, what town's that in? Corpus Christi. And then it's out there. And it's diesel Technologies. What? I think I'm a couple of credits shy of like associate's degree. Yeah. Because I got Amanda pregnant. And so how I was raised is, you know, hey, if you... You know, you're going to play family, you need to take care of your family. Right. So I got pushed aside, and then I was like, I need to get a job working. And so I got a job. You know, my dad, the company that he was working for, he says, I know somebody that can piss clean and show up to work. And, you know, and we're like, who? And he's like, my son. Right. So I got my foot in the door, and then been doing it ever since, I think, 23 years. So, yeah. So, you never had a job in Arkansas? No. Never did? No. And my transportation was a bike. So, yeah. you know. That's all you need, man, when you're yeah. a kid, is bike. So. And what year did you and Amanda get married? You remember? Nine years ago? No. When when did you get married? Yeah, divorced. Okay. We were married for seven years. What year did you get married? Do you remember? You were married to her in 04, right? I think before in 04. Right. Yeah. You don't remember what year you, you guys got married? No, oh, but I, mean, I was together with her. I'd have to do math and all that stuff. Yeah. No, oh, it's all right.
In Rockport. In Rockport. Yeah. Oh, we're originally from Rockport and stuff. Right. Okay. And uh, any other places where you guys lived? Rockport and Miranda's Pass and stuff. And then when she got divorced, we got divorced and all that stuff, she moved to Houston. Yeah, and she's in Houston. Yeah, she's in Houston. And she's remarried? She's remarried. I think he's ex-military. Oh, really? Yeah. When when did she remarry? Do you know? I couldn't tell you. I, you know I, what's his name? His name is Jason. Jason. The um, I'd have to look on my phone to see the last name I. Right. Well, when did you when did you head out for the Philippines? When did you leave country the first time? Uh, just traveling or just to work? Well, when you left and you decided you weren't coming back for a while, work related, I guess. I mean, I'm not talking about six vac years, vacations, six years, and all that stuff. Okay, so 2014. How'd you swing a job in the Philippines? I'm curious. Not in the Philippines, and I worked in Africa. Oh, in Africa. Alrighty. Uh. It was in 2000. Why, why did I think the Philippines? Because I told you I lived in the Philippines. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, working in the oil field, working down in South Texas in a plant and stuff. Right. Um, I had some issues with a supervisor where I think that was his security blanket, where he didn't want me to leave. And it's like, hey, you know, I've told my time, you know, I'm ready to go home. I get home, hey, we need you to come back. We have issues with the, the facility. Right. And so, and the the job was, is I was supposed to sit there and uh, do startup and commissioning one facility, move to the next one, do startup and uh, that, and training, you know, people to run the facility and keep doing the same thing. But yeah. they stuck me in an area where there was tons of rattlesnakes uh, out in the middle of a ranch that. Literally, it took you an hour to get off the ranch, and then an hour down a dirt road, and then another hour to the the biggest city. Right. So, and that supervisor kept, you know, you know, like you need to stay here. You know, right. your your run times like really good and all that stuff. And then we're we had some incidents where the facility shut down. Everybody's I'm working nights, and so they're like, hey, you need you need to come over here and bring on the. Uh, or we need you. I walk in, everybody's sitting in the office and yeah. you know, no lights, they don't have electricity. I'm like, why don't you have a start? Oh, I don't know. Walk over there. We got power and it's like everybody get out of the office and start bringing on wells and then and that. So I just had a kind of like a run in with a guy that he just like I felt was over abusing me in a way. Right. It's like, you know, right. I need some time off. And that's the biggest thing is mine is I'm a workaholic. Yeah. I'm not an alcoholic, you know, I don't do drugs and all that stuff. Yeah. I just work, work, work. You just say, hey, you know, you want to make some extra money, you know, working? Yes. Yeah. I jump on it. Right. And then when I want to buy something, it's like, how many workovers is that? You know, yeah. and that's my mentality and how I look at things. Right, right. You were asking how we kind of got off the subject and all that stuff. So, um, one night I applied. I was on in the internet and just applied. And then uh, sent out my resume to like 250 companies. And then one night just sent it to there. And then two days later, I got a recruiter that says, Hey, would you be interested? Sure, you know. And then uh, did uh, two interviews with uh, two OIMs, big bosses and all that stuff. Yeah. And then uh, one of those on my, asked them, you know, one of the last interviews, you know, if, you know, be honest and straightforward with me or if, if you're uh, interested. He's like, yeah, you'll be here in a few months. And two days later, um, they got a phone call that says, you need to go to do a health check. And literally I got like 24 shots in my arm. Right. Yeah, man. And then they were like, okay, uh, September the 16th, uh, they said, you know, okay, you're going to be flying out. And so I went over there, and 
and I think it was... Where'd you fly into? Uh, on... What what country? Yeah. Equatorial New Guinea. New Guinea? Yeah, Equatorial New Guinea. So, that's... And that's a dictator there. You don't talk about religion, you don't talk about politics, you don't, you know, it's just... Yeah. Put your head down and just go. Right. So, uh, so yeah, so... Went over there and then been there for seven years, and then I was going over to the Philippines. But prior to that, I went to the Philippines a couple times. Just to visit? You're just curious about the Philippines? Uh, I kind of ran into like a uh, a girl before I met my, you know, Amanda and stuff, and uh, I called her the what if? What if I would have just yeah went and saw her, you know, went and, you know, and so I kind of ran into her after I got divorced, and... Now, how you got to tell me about that, man? That, that's, what's, the, how's the what if girl... Okay, okay, I was really young, and, uh, I think I was in high school, because when I got with Amanda, I think I was, like, a, a senior, mm. and so, and she was younger and all that stuff, so during, I think, the junior... I think the junior year, we went up and I met this girl, and then uh, in New Brunswick on a trip with my parents, uh -huh. a camping trip and all that stuff. Uh -huh. And so me and her kind of kept in contact for about a year, and then we lost contact. And so she was all I had like uh, pictures and all that stuff of her and uh -huh. stuff. And so I was like, well, what if I would have just done that? So I used to live a life of what if, what if. Just kind of lived in my own little square box and all that stuff and, you know, be afraid of uh, the unknown. Yeah. So I ran into her again and went and saw her and stuff and then realized, you know, because when we talked, she's like, you really didn't do much, you know. And so I was like, you know, okay, no more what ifs. And, you know, I've always talked about going to, like, the Philippines or Thailand and stuff. And so I was like, okay, no more what ifs. I'm just going to go do it. Yeah. So literally I jump on a plane and go to the Philippines. And I get off the plane. And it's like, I don't speak the language. What the hell did I get myself into? And so, yeah. And then went and did, like, five islands. Yeah. And there's over, like, 7,000-something islands over there. Right. So you kind of just did like a vacation trip, your first time to the Philippines, yeah. just kind of feel it out, see yeah, what it was like. And, stuff. and then I was online, and then um, met my wife now and all that stuff. Online? Online. What What was the dating at? What, or what no, it was it? Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. It was in a group and all that stuff, and met her and all that stuff, and then went over there. She knows English good. Her English is good, better than how the country's that and all that stuff. Right. And then so, went over there and saw her a couple of times, and then one of the times she's like, hey, you know, you're, you're going to be a daddy, and yeah. I was like, okay. Now, does she have to work, because you make good money, I assume, working on a, you're an offshore oil Over oil there, oil. I'm a multi-millionaire. Right. Right, so she probably doesn't have to work. She runs the farm. Yeah, runs the farm. Oh, the, the money that comes in, all that stuff, she's the banker. She gets it, collects it. And then, yeah. Because uh, we have a banana plantation. Cause we, we, you know, got 30 acres. They're all farmers and stuff. Right. And so right. it just, we get a bigger percent. And then, you know, the people that work and all that stuff get a percent too. Yeah. And so, um, so yeah, so we... That's kind of how it goes yeah. like that. And, right. and so... Um, you living high on the hall, man, out in the Philippines. $1,500, you live like a king. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I me, mean, I make, like, when I go to work for a month, that's, you know, like, close to twenty five grand. Right. And with me living outside the country and all that stuff, I don't have to pay taxes. Yeah, you're not taxed. I'm 98K, 98K tax-free. Now, if I stay out of the country and all that stuff, up to 330 days and all that stuff, I don't have to pay nothing but Social Security. Right. And stuff. So that Are you getting hit for child support? I do pay child support and stuff and, uh, in the U.S. and then whatever Amanda needs or anything. Right. 
then she'll ask. Now, is that court ordered, or are you just doing that uh, because that's so there's court order, and then there's uh, extra that I, you know, or the, the Emily wants to do because that Heidi's the oldest. Emily, um, how old is Heidi? Twenty two. Twenty two. And then uh, Emily is fourteen. Fourteen. So she's doing gymnastics, cheerleader, and all that stuff. And so. If they want to do that kind of stuff, then right. They know. What's Emily doing? She's 22. Is she? Does no, she have you just, no, no, no. Heidi, Heidi, Heidi's the 22. She's kind of uh, helps raise her siblings, in my opinion. Yeah. Is she still at the house? She's still oh, so she doesn't have a career. She's not. No, she's dyslexic. She has some, oh. you know, issues and stuff, kind of learning disabilities. Okay. And so, uh, you think it's an actual disability or not a disability? Just I think the ex-wife kind of pushes it, you know, just like you know, hey, you take care of your sisters, and because right. my wife is, you know, more, you know, doing her work and all that stuff. So the oldest is cleaning, cooking, and taking care of the younger siblings, taking cheating to practice, doing all that stuff where mom's doing a career and then Jason Jason don't care, I guess. I don't know. Uh, the things I see on Facebook is that it, you know, he goes through work like changing constantly. So I don't try to get in her business, you know, and she don't get into my business and stuff right. and right. it just we talk about the kids, you know, hey how they doing? Or hey, your right. child support check is a little off. Yeah. Okay, you know, or let me look into it and see if right. I need to, you know, send money in. So right. Okay. So I'm curious. Can you can you name all of the places that you've lived in the United States? Lived. All right. Yeah, I've lived in uh, Texas. I lived in Arkansas. Town. I'm talking towns. Towns? Yeah. We got Aransas Pass. We got Rockport. We got Melbourne. Alaska. Anchorage, Alaska. How long were you in Alaska? Six months. Six months. I tried to get a job up on the North Slope, and that's when my dad died. Okay. And so. What uh, year was was Alaska? He died in 2000. So it was sometime in the 2000 that I went up there for six months. Okay. And I tried to get a job up on the North Slope. Okay. And then, and then the Philippines. And then the Philippines. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So five places. And if you ever come back to the States, you think Oregon's going to be home? I just bought a 41-acre farm here and all that stuff. We're in partnerships, me, my brother, and his uh, soon-to-be. Uh, think they're getting married yeah, they're so in love. That, so. Yeah, and that's where mom mom loves it. Uh, I'm pushing for mom to retire. I told mom, you know, let me take care of you. You know, in mom's, she's, you know, in my opinion, she's losing her mind and all that stuff. Really, because it's, you know, grandpa was losing his mind, and I've been told, you know, that Uncle Bobby's right. kind of losing his mind, cool. and, and, and then. And then mom, she's done them some like stupid things where like we get on Highway Five and then she gets off of Highway Five and we're driving like for 45 minutes. I'm looking at my phone, reading all this information to her, and I look up and it's like you know, yeah, where are we at? I don't know. And it's like okay. And then like uh, my mom's job is you know, hey, send paperwork to the tax lady. Right. And then the tax lady sits there, you know, yeah. and she's like, uh, your mom didn't send it to me. And I was like, oh. So, yeah. Now, how old is your mom? She's in her 60s? Yeah, she's in her 60s. Yeah, 63-ish. Yeah. I think she's 18 years older than me, and I'm 44. And your, your dad died 20 years ago. Yeah, 20 years ago. And she has never remarried? No. Wow. How long were they married? That's the thing. 18, 19, 18, 19 years. Yeah. No, no, I mean when she was 18, 19 oh, years old. Oh, okay, I got you. And stuff. Yeah. So that was her sweetheart. Yeah. So she just says that, you know, me and, uh, me and Jeremy are her, uh, you know, husbands, you know, you know the man in her family. Right, know. right.
So, you know, let's talk about the hearsay. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you've got some theories and some ideas of, you know, I, I mean, that's why I'm here is, is okay, to, to well, re-interview everybody. We sat here until the cops got in Texas. You know, um, mom told me that she felt creepy. You know, any time that she took anything over to Uncle Bobby's house or whatever, that Uncle Bobby says, hey, can you get this when you go into, you know, where the, the local Walmart's at? I don't, I, I think maybe in Batesville or something. I'm not totally for sure. Um, to get him things and all that stuff, and Mom would go drop it off. And then, and then you know, Mom's like telling me that the neighbors would just kind of like, you know, be staring out the window constantly, you know, the door cracked, just being weird, mm -hmm. just being odd. Uh, when I was talking to Mom about this, you know, Mom says that Grandpa said that he believed one of them was a peeper. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Mom, what's a peeper? And she's like, it looks like, you know, peeping Tom because he's down in blankets all over, you know, on the property. Yeah. And stuff. And so, um, so my thought would be, you know, you know, those people, you know, because they watch that place like a hawk, in my opinion, after all the stuff that was told to, you know, us, mm -hmm. or what I've heard from Grandpa and what, what I've heard from Mom. Mm -hmm. uh, Grandpa sat there and said that they shot one of his cows, they killed one of his pigs, he believed that they killed Rebecca's dog, mm -hmm. and, and stuff, mm -hmm. and then, um, you know, um, so yeah, then my question is, is you know, did they question both brothers, or did they just question one brother and all that stuff? Yeah. And his wife, you know. Right. And I think, I believe they were the T, 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 Tegans or Tegans? Yeah. Yeah, they've all, they were all interviewed, and, you know, there's so many people in this investigation and in this case file, you know, but yeah, they were... They were interviewed, and like I was talking before about polygraphs, you know, uh, almost I, all of the McCulloughs have been polygraphed. Um, uh, a number of other people have been, you know. Um, that's one. That, that's a tool that we like to use to, you know, it kind of gives us a pretty good indication of, of that somebody's lying or telling the truth. Yeah, that stuff. yeah, yeah. I mean, well, would you be okay with? Taking a polygraph, I'll just ask you. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. You don't, don't have that problem. Yeah. You want me to go to Arkansas and take one? No, I'll, yeah. I tell you what. Let me holler. I'll call a, I'll call a sergeant up here to see. They may have a polygrapher in town. You know, it's a shot in the dark. But uh, so, what other questions you're gonna ask me? Well, I'll, I'll, let, let me see. Let me see. Uh, if they got somebody, because I still have a lot more questions for you, but hang on a minute here. It's worth a shot. <clears throat> hey, sorry, just make me off. Hey, do you happen to have a polygrapher in town? Do, do you know, do you have somebody available that could do a polygraph if we needed one?
know, they're catching a lot of shit, you know, from yeah. people that, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty crazy over there. Yeah. So, so yeah, so I told Randy if he needs any legal and all that stuff, and then he's like, you know, he talked to Casey, and Casey sat there and says, you know, no. And so it's like, what do you mean you talked to Casey? He says, I said, said, Randy talked to Casey. Oh, okay. And Casey's, no. And because, you know, for uh, slander and all that stuff. And um, right. because on the, I think there's the podcast and all that stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. So if you had, can we talk about maybe some conversations conversations that you've had with, with Randy about this? And have you talked to anybody else about the investigation? No, just Randy. Just Randy? Yeah. And then I did talk to Casey a long time ago before the, the, the I think the, the, I think during the podcast thing was going on, the Hell and Gone one. Right. Okay. So, and then I think that was about the lawyer thing. Right. When so that, when that Hell and Gone podcast was when I sat there because they were, uh, sitting there and uh, I threw that out there, you know, needed, you know, if you need money and all that stuff. Yeah. And then Randy sat there and says, you know, they don't want or they don't, you know. Right. You know, so it's like, you know, okay. Yeah. And I, I think can't people force somebody, you know, yeah. to, you know that. Well, I think it's kind of these people that are saying all these bad things, they're, they're, Toting that fine line between, uh, you know, something criminal and and just, you know, being ugly. You know what I mean? There's a difference between defamation of character and just saying, you know, calling somebody a name or whatever. So I, there, there's a lot of people out there saying a lot of ugly things, but I don't think it's risen to criminal, which you know, Casey would have some some avenues there, some options to take, you know, to try to get these people to, to shut up. Yeah. And so I think that's kind of, yeah. So. That's a really good tool that, that we like to use, so I appreciate it. But it doesn't hold up in court, correct? Right. That's uh, it, it can it can be admissible if from what I understand, now I'm not a polygraph guy, and when the polygraph guy gets here he'll explain it all to you. But I think it's my understanding that both the, the prosecution and the defense would have to agree to it. You know, if you're if you if, if this ended up going to trial, or somebody went to trial and, and they had a polygraph and they didn't want it, you know, admissible in court, then then it, it wouldn't be. I think both parties have to be in agreement. I think that's how that works. But like I said, I'm not the polygraph guy. And also, so if I pass this, I'm just saying pass this, then you this is over with me, correct? Or or is this going to be kind of dragging on, or you're going to be well, man, I, you know, I'm just saying, you, you know, know, you know, I, you know, I, I want to live my life, and then, yeah. Let me tell you, I'm, I live in Arkansas, and I work in Arkansas, and uh, I don't figure I'm ever coming to Oregon again work-related. You know what I'm saying? You know, this thing has been carrying on in, in 16 years now, and... You know, homicide is something that uh, we we can't ever close. So whenever it was given to me, it's my. So in a way, I'm asking you, I'm a suspect. No, I'm not saying you're a suspect. No, huh? Not at all. So looking at it from my perspective, Rebecca was killed Monday. Anybody that was at that property, at the crime scene, 
the day before or the day after or, you know, anybody that was there during that period of time is a person of interest. So even the neighbors, even absolutely. all the neighbors that are around. Absolutely, and that's why they've all been interviewed and, you know, people that have, there's been a number of polygraphs given uh, as a result of, of this investigation. Okay. I'm not going to sit here and say you're a suspect, but just for the simple fact you stopped by there Sunday night to shoot the shit with Casey for 15 minutes, you know, that you're somebody now that, that we have to... Exclu yeah, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So. We've already talked about being in the trailer. What about after 04? Had you, had you ever come back to Arkansas after 04? No. So once you, and then uh, after moving mom back, no, I haven't came back and all that stuff. And then grandpa went into the nursing home. Yeah, right. And then so, um, you know, I when I would go up, it'd be more to visit grandpa. Right. And if Uncle Bobby was around and all that stuff. Right. You know, or if Randy was around and all that stuff, I would feel that I'm closer to Randy than. You know, the other and then guy. he was in the military, and yeah. he wasn't even really around Melbourne. Yeah. Back, you know. When you know, I can tell you that you know uh, that the McCullough boys. Maybe I can count on both of my hands how many times I've seen them throughout their life. Really? Yeah. You know, I we know that we're related, but right. You know, we you know, hey, I'm gonna come hang out at your house and all that stuff. Yeah. You know. Me, it's more of work, 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 and stuff, and then, yeah. you know, I want to have nice things, and, right. Yeah. Right. So, anything else you want to ask me? Oh, yeah, man, I got some more here. Okay, tea, I mean, comes, tea coming at yeah. you, know, I'm, you know. What? I don't want you to feel like I'm coming at you. No, I mean, come at with me with more questions and all oh, that okay. stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, like, I, like I said, man, I appreciate you coming up here. and You know, it's... So, do you think that... Uh, I guess what I'm hearing, your your theory on possibly who who's responsible for this is maybe the neighbor? You know, I, I, I believe that, you know... I'm thinking it was a neighbor. Yeah. Because they would sit there and, and you know, anytime, if you talk to mom, she's going to tell you that every time that they came up there, you know, they watched that place like a hawk. Right. Who was coming and going. Right. You know, and like, there was times where mom went up there where grandpa got Jeremy to go weed whack. Right. And mom sit in the vehicle and they could sit there and give a description to what mom looked like and Jeremy and what vehicle. Right. And all that stuff. And then, so yeah, it's just kind of, to me that's really odd. And Grandpa had issues with them and all that stuff. Right. So like me and Randy talked and I said that, you know, about certain things that what Grandpa said. And, and Randy's like, you know, you know, I'm not, you know, like Grandpa's, you know, getting old and senile, you know. Right. I wouldn't believe it and all that stuff. And I was like, you know, you know, I'm hearing from Mom that Grandpa was saying about, uh, the blankets. You know, people, yeah. why would somebody have blankets out on the property? Right, exactly. Right. So, you know, that that's, you know, that's, I always believed in, in my statement in the beginning was towards the neighbor. Yeah. And reading the newspaper uh, that uh, they heard screams. Right. The night before. Yeah. Uh, if you heard screams, I'd be calling the law. Would you? Yeah. I would. Yeah, I would too. Yeah. And saying there's something going on, you need to get out of here. Right. So. Right. Yeah. Well, let me let me ask you this. Uh, you know, DNA these days that's that's a big deal, right? DNA science it, it it's ever evolving and getting better and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
there's a number of people that have provided DNA uh, voluntarily. Would you be willing to provide your DNA? Oh, and it would be a cheek swab. I don't want to take blood or. But the or, thing is, is if I've been in the house and all that stuff, my DNA would be in there. Well, and, and that's that's an excellent point, and and that is on record, and and we know that. Uh, that that's why I wanted to know. When were you in that trailer last, and what was that like? And, and you said that you used the bathroom, uh, you never stayed over, you never slept over. No, but the, I know that Mom gave furniture to Uncle Bobby when Aunt Vicky uh, got divorced because she took everything that was in the trailer. Okay. So I know Mom gave them furniture, Okay. beds, you know, a whole bunch of different stuff okay. in the home. Okay, okay. I didn't know that. So a lot of the furniture in that home came from your mom's house? Yeah. Which is furniture that you would have been on. Been on. on. Okay. Gotcha. So, yeah, when Aunt Vicky divorced, she took everything and there was nothing in there and mom filled them up with beds, right. furniture, and all that stuff for right. that. Right. Well, obviously I can't talk a lot about the evidence in the investigation, you know, it's an ongoing investigation. I understand yeah. investigation, but uh, I can assure you that there are items of evidence that there should be no reason your DNA should be on it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, I, I, I like I'll give you an example. Uh, Let's say the, whoever did this uh, exited the trailer through a window, right, and they cut himself, and there's blood on that window. Well, the, whoever cut themselves, their DNA is going to be on that piece of glass, mm -hmm. you know. And obviously, uh, that didn't happen in this case, but that's just an example. Uh, we believe investigators, the, the people that have worked this, we believe that we have the suspect's DNA on a piece of evidence that is very specific and very unique and nobody else's DNA should be on it. Uh, so that's that's why I'm asking is obviously we've never gotten your DNA, we've never gotten Jeremy's DNA, you know, there's there's people that, that uh, aren't in the case file that haven't provided DNA. So you know, it's my job to ask. If you don't feel comfortable with it, based on these other factors, uh, even so what other factors and all that stuff. Because now it seems like, you know, you're into window to me that you're saying that I have something to do. No, not not at all. No, I, I'm just trying to better understand. You know, you because like I said, you know, I'm kind of dyslexic and yeah, you know, and maybe I'm trying to better understand. I, you I, I just stuff. want you to be assured that. Because you know your your the furniture in the home came from your mom's house at some point in time, and and that you sat on that couch or that you slept on a bed, bed yeah. or you know none of that is in play, none of that is in play at all. So you know if if you don't feel comfortable doing it, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna push you or try to put any pressure on you. It's you know, just, I do a lie detector test and all that stuff, but. You know, yeah. If you, that's fine. I, I it just, to me, it's just you know, yeah. My DNA is going to be in there, right? Stuff. Right. Okay. You know, uh, yeah. You know, I came up here on, you know, absolutely. You know, up here because you're asking me to come up here. You come from Arkansas. And all that I know, stuff. man. Long I'm way. sitting here giving you information that you're asking and stuff. Yeah. I'm not lying to you. I'm being straight up with you and yeah. all that stuff. So yeah. You know, I just. Yeah, and see, I didn't know about the furniture deal and all that. All that furniture came from your mom's house. My mom gave furniture to him and all that stuff, but I don't know. You're going to have to ask her. Yeah, she was, she's probably going to be able to be a little bit more specific about what furniture. Yeah, so, yeah, you know. Okay. So, yeah, my DNA is going to be all in that house. Right. I think of that furniture and all that stuff. Okay. All right. Fair enough. So, you know, and then my, my thought is, is that, you know, um, now that that makes sense. And 
medicine, so I got another question for you. Okay. Is, is I take blood pressure medicine. Right. All right. And then I take anxiety medicine, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, is that going to affect well, your, your well, I'm just asking yeah. because no, you know, I, I, I just, if you don't want me to take that medicine and all that stuff and do a test and all that stuff. No, not all that. And because, you know, I, uh, I don't want it to affect yeah. your results. No, absolutely. Stuff. I want you to know that I'm telling you 100%. Yeah, yeah, no. And the, when the polygraph guy gets here, he'll explain all that and he'll, he, I'm sure that uh, you'll have a number of questions for him and he'll be able to answer every one of them. Yeah. Okay? I've never, I'm not a polygraph guy. You've got to go to uh, you know all kinds of schools and get certified and all that kind of stuff. So I'm not I'm not that guy that that can that can answer those questions. But if you have any questions at all when he gets here, mm -hmm. ask him. Okay. All right. Be right back. Let me see if he's here. Can I use the restroom? You bet. Yeah. Come on. I'll walk you. I'm on right where it's at.